I love the PlayStation family of consoles. I've owned every one, except for the PSP. A lot of people would call me a Sony pony. You mean people like these morons right here? While I may support the company as a gamer because they offer the type of products I typically like, I will call the company out on their bullshit when I think they're releasing a bad product. That's exactly what Project Q is, a bad product. In this video, I'll give my five reasons why I think Project Q is doomed to fail. So, let's get into the video. From the very scant information on Project Q, it has been intimated the product will only be a remote play device. As I covered in my video on why the May 2023 showcase was disappointing, I made the point remote play was a nice feature for the PlayStation Vita, but it wasn't a be-all end-all one. Remote play on the PS5 is definitely a needed feature, however Project Q is the wrong way to go about it. That's the product's only reason for existing to be a remote play device. At that point you might as well buy a decent gaming laptop and use remote play through that. But even that isn't ideal. In theory you can have remote play across the globe, however lag issues, otherwise known as latency, can be present even within your own home if you wanted to do remote play in a separate room, since it's likely Project Q will only support a Wi-Fi connection and not anything stronger, thus making it a questionable product. While Sony haven't given a price on this unit yet, in all likelihood it's going to cost a fair deal. This comes down to it basically being a DualSense welded onto a phone screen. By itself, a DualSense costs 89 Canadian, that's excluding the DualSense Edge, which clocks in at 269 Canadian. So at minimum, Project Q will likely cost 120 bucks. However, if I were to take a stab in the dark, I'm guessing it's going to cost around 180. Either way, it's not going to be a cheap add-on product, which means gamers are likely to spend their buck elsewhere. The PSP and the PS Vita had their own gaming libraries, while well, the Vita's wasn't the deepest and a lot of its titles later got ported to PS4 and other consoles, it at least made sense as a product since it could remote play PS3 and PS4 games, while also offering its own unique titles. Part of why the Vita failed was thanks to Sony marketing it poorly, pricing it a bit too high, and not having faith in the product long term. If they'd forced some of their premier first-party developers to work on it, I believe the little handheld would have had a longer shelf life and it probably would have been beloved by the gaming public at large. The PSP was considered a successful product and that comes down to the fact it was offering decent exclusives, launched at an okay price, and Sony marketed it in a smart way. So going off the marketing they have for Project Q, it's just intended as a remote play option for PS5 games, meaning it won't have its own exclusives. Since it won't have any exclusives of its own, it's a harder product to sell to gamers in general since very few are going to want to play the PS5 on the go, especially if it's as janky as this product seems. I'd still find Project Q hard to recommend even if it got its own exclusive games because the design is so odd and quite frankly messy. It's literally a dual sense with a screen welded on. I'm actually inclined to agree with you here, Colin. I think that this is the stupidest thing I have ever seen Sony announce. I mean, it's literally just take a phone screen or a tablet screen and then take a dual sense, cut it in half, weld the sides to the sides of the fucking tablet, and then there you go. Like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over <laughs> I can't get over how stupid this is, man. I really can't. I can't. Let's face it, while you can travel with controllers, they're kind of awkwardly shaped. Project Q will likely come with a travel pouch akin to the DualSense Edge, but it's still going to be a slightly awkward product to travel with since it's going to be pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> The Switch is at least relatively slender and can fit into purses, cross body bags, and backpacks easily. Project Q, yeah, I don't see that happening because of how thick the handles on the DualSense are. Also, unless it has its own dedicated case, the screen is probably going to be easily damaged. Overall, it's like Sony haven't thought this product through. While my fifth point might seem an odd one to bring up, it's true. Its target audience is so small, they make Kwame Brown's hands look like shacks. Too right you are, and that's a fucking statement and a half, because that man's hands, for an NBA player, his hands are small! 
Off the top of my head, I don't even know five fucking people that would buy this product, so how in their right minds does Sony think it's Legion of Ponies will? I know I definitely won't be buying this product, and it's just sad to see Sony could have released something really cool, but they went for something jankier than a Wii U. So those are just my thoughts on why Project Q is doomed to fail. What do you think of the product and will you buy it? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Two of my previous videos will be popping up on screen now. One is why the PlayStation Showcase was disappointing and the other is five obscure PlayStation exclusives no one talks about. Until next time, keep blazing that trail.